Yeah. Good evening, everyone who's joining us at Village Hall and online. Welcome to our April 2023 monthly meeting. Today's a, a combination of uh, public hearing and then reports, our usual reports from departments and boards and municipal partners. Um, then we have a bit of budget, uh, excuse me, a bit of business at the end. Um, so stick, stick around with us. Um, may I have a roll call vote, please? Well, Mayor Pauly. Roll call here. Trustee Bozzi. Here. Trustee Fatty. Here. Trustee Starbuck. Here. And Trustee Woods. Here. Thank you. First item is opportunity to request to vote or to add or modify agenda items and requests. Um, we'll move into public hearing for budgets. So, um, just a, a few, sorry? No. Oh, announcements. Uh, I do have. Uh, Tomorrow is yard debris pickup. Thank you, Jeff. Um, remember, we do put it out on garbage day. It does get picked up with the garbage trucks, but again, it is sorted um, on site. I have. Um, videos of it being sorted. I assure you it's being sorted. Um, put it out in paper bags, please. No plastic um, and branches should be bundled in two foot lengths. Um, so there will be a joint public meeting um, on May 8th at seven o'clock at the Haldane School Auditorium related to the proposed Hudson Highlands Fjord Trail. Um, it will be among the, the boards of the village of Cold Spring, the village of Nelsonville, and Bob's joining us tonight, the town of Phillipstown. Um, and we wanted the meeting to be structured in a way that it could be driven by top priority questions as defined by community members. And rather than having board members and elected officials determine what those questions are, we developed a process guided by resident participation. So starting today, residents can submit questions um, until April 19th. There's a link on our website. Um, it's available on our social media pages as well, or you can email them um, to hhftquestions at gmail.com, or if you want to drop them off at Village Hall, um, you're welcome to do that as well. You can, we have a mail slot that's available 24 hours a day if you're not able to get in um, during the daytime hours. Um, and then we'll ask residents to rank them beginning April 21st. So um, these questions will then be made available to parks and Pure Trail staff so that we can answer them and have they can answer them and have a productive session. Um, and that's the most important thing is that this be a productive conversation. Um, and we recognize that there are a range of views in the community. There's a range of views among the board, a range of views among the municipalities. Um, but it's important that we have that conversation and we have that public conversation. So um, please participate and uh, share the information out to others. And now we'll move on to budget. So just to remind everyone, the village budget operates on a fiscal year of June 1 to May 31st. There are three funds, the general fund, water and sewer, developing the budget. You've been watching us do this for a number of weeks now. It's a collaborative process among the trustees and village staff, consideration of public input. It's a process of drafting, revising and improving through a multi-workshop process um, which we've been involved in for, for several weeks. So now is the time when we open the floor to you. I will say we have a, um, a visual summary um, of the budget that would be made available on the Village website. We are going to open the public comment session tonight um, and leave it open for a period of time. So if you're not someone who enjoys reading through Excel spreadsheets, there will be a more accessible um, format available on the website. So. Um, I make a motion to open the public hearing on the 2023-2024 budget. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Are there any members of the public who'd like to speak on the, the matter of the budgets? The, um, Could you I identify your name and address, please? Uh, the uh, write-up says that there are 17 police officers, but that the budget detail shows 18. I don't have the details in front of me. Do you have it, Michelle? Um, there should be 17 named officers and one officer as a potential new hire due to turnover. Okay. So I'm, I'm, I'm trying to. Oh, yeah. 
of the 17 named officers that one of them will go away. One of them may retire. And, and so this to be determined officer will take that spot. Um, yes, but because it's contractual, not sure if the officer who may or may not leave spends their uniform allowance, and then the new officer would have uniform allowance. Yeah, well, they, they were both sense. counted. Yep. Uh, um, I should pause and introduce again Michelle Escalillo, who's the village accountant um, and is key in developing our budget. Are there any comments, other comments from the public in the room? Any comments from the public joining us online? Okay, budget is riveting. Is oh, go ahead, Jane. Could well, you state your name and address, please? My name is Jane Silverton. I live on Hall Street, and I have a building on Main Street. And I'm concerned about the water bill increase. That's why I came. Okay. Can you explain, or can anybody explain, the difference in the water usage and just the, the sewer bill, whatever the sewer bill is? So there are a couple of parts that are important to understand with water and sewer. Yes. Both water and sewer have a flat rate that everyone pays. Yes. It's one price in the village of Cold Spring and a slightly higher price for the outside areas that we serve, Nelsonville and a, a small bit of Phillipstown. Um, the, the usage fee is just what it sounds like, a bill for the amount of water you actually use and it's per thousand gallons. Yes. Same with water. I'm sorry, same with same with sewer. There is a flat rate fee and a usage fee. So the people who are using the water the most are paying the most based on their usage per thousand gallons. Does that yeah. help? There, no, there's a usage fee for the sewer also. That's right, because they're two separate plants that we have to maintain and fund. So there has always been a flat fee but not always, oh. <laughs> there has for quite some time been a flat fee for water and sewer and a usage fee for water and sewer. But when the bill comes, it only shows water and sewer. That's it doesn't show usage all the time, I think. Michelle, do you want to address that question? I'm not quite sure. So I'm going to my copy, which Jeff is always helping. No, there's sure. always consumption. There's always a consumption figure on there. But it's just one figure, right? water and sewer together? Yes, what goes in goes out. So it's 20 gallons come in, 20 gallons go out. No, it's not like a drink again. No, it's prorated, right, Jeff. It's not the same total going in, coming out. I think it's 50%. No. Then the rate is 50%. There is assumption that some of so We're going to let our, excuse me, Thank you, member of the public. But we're going to let the accountant answer that question as she's the one with the knowledge on the current rate. Thank you. Go ahead, Michelle. There, there are separate, there are different rates for water and for sewer. The consumption that it's based on is under the assumption that what comes in goes out. We do not capture what goes out. So that's why the assumption is there. So yes, you may drink a gallon, but well, yes. and remember, when the water goes out, right, where you are, your water is being, the raw water <laughs> is treated before it comes to you so that it's potable. Mm -hmm. So there are expenses related to that. And then when you flush or use the shower or cook and dump a pot, that water goes to the sewer treatment plant where it must be extensively treated before it's discharged into the Hudson River. So there are costs related to that. So the bill increase just shows 16% plus for sewer and another smaller increase, but significant for water. Another what? Another increase for water. That's right. There are adjustments. There are adjustments on both sides of the house, as it were, um, in this year's budget. They are different adjustments because we are trying to make those amounts more reflective of each other. We're all it, our water superintendent calls it faucet to flush, right? We're all using water and discharging water. And the, the differential in those rates was pretty extreme. So the, get it in front of me. So it's a $10 increase in only in the flat rate for water, not a change in the usage because we changed, we, up, we updated that one last year. 
So just your flat fee modifies for water. And then sewer. Give me one second to get the right numbers in front of me. $2, $2 for usage. So there's no change in the flat rate. We adjusted flat rate for water and usage rate for sewer. And the current is at 16%. Well, I can't I can't speak for what the current has reported. That's what I'm telling you is the change in the budget. Is it in this pack? It is. Oh good. And, and Jane will have there will be a visual breakdown available on the village website that you can look at. We're going to leave the public comment period open, and I think the visual will help you quite a bit. Jane, there's a second package here that's specific to the budget. And within the first three pages, it talks about the three funds that the village had. <coughs> one fund is for water, one is for sewer, and it goes into the rate increases wow. and how the different we, things apply. We have, we have not much water. <clears throat> me, we have not much water usage in our because we just have two. We don't have many toilets or anything. And our water bill is already almost seven hundred dollars. So I would imagine people who use more water wash more clothes. That that's the point. People who use more pay more. That's the point. Diapers, which we don't have, are gonna be really shocked when they get their bill. So but in fact the the water rate just I mean, I guess the sewer is related, but um, the, the change to the, to the water is in the flat rate, right? So that is a flat rate. And then um, uh, maybe this is helpful. Michelle, you had laid out the likely increase for typical households. You had found that 86% of accounts use under 100,000 mm -hmm. gallons. And so it would be a $76 increase mm -hmm. over the course of the year. So that, so likely, it sounds like perhaps the increase for your household would be left from that on the water side if you're, if, um, if you're less than average or le less than that at that point. Okay, how much? How about $16? $76. Over the, over the year. year. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions from the audience or from Zoom? Okay. Um, well, hearing none, I will uh, I'd like to make a motion to leave the public comment period open for a week. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, and we vote on the budget on April 26th. Okay. So reports from village departments. Michelle is here. We know you've been all about the budget in the last few weeks. Anything that you'd like to add as part of report? Um, no, it's really just been budget. And then, you know, we're at quarterly tax season, like for the village, not, you know, for residents, it's our internal stuff, the payroll taxes. Um, I am working on doing um, some projections that I'll share with the board another week or two, just to keep us on track for year end spending. We've talked a lot about spending fund balance, just to have a better gauge on if there's savings other places or things that, you know, were budgeted in the beginning of the year. And then through, you know, April, say April 1st, April 15th, if they're not paid or haven't been done, we can have still six weeks to get those things done. So I'm working on that to share in a okay. week or two. Great. Um, do we have Bugsy with us tonight? Yes. So roadways and facilities, Bugsy. I'm gonna pull out a couple highlights. Hi, how you doing? Um, yeah, I don't have my report with me. So if you have any questions on it, sorry, I didn't get home till late tonight. No problem. Um, your report summarizes that you've been getting ready for spring and you've been addressing fleet management. Sounds like the, the big pieces right now. Yes. Uh, we started in the. Yeah, we started in the street sweeping. We're getting set up for the signs to be delivered hopefully soon for Main Street. I've been working with Eliza on that. We're prepping, gonna start prepping the tunnel to have that painted. Um, 
bathrooms are almost completely ready. The mayor's park pavilion one. I just have to pick up one part from home Depot and they'll be all ready to go. The visitor centered bathrooms are ready to go. And that's about what we're trying to keep up with right now. Thank you very much. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you as well. Oh yes. And thank you very much for the mulch with Bugsy. Um, in a Bugsy has struck a couple of cooperative agreements in the last in the last year, and one of them is uh, acquiring um, tree, uh, tree cuttings that were chipped and left the mulch at the highway department. We're now using that free mulch on Main Street. Um, and thank you to the volunteers. Alas, I didn't bring the list of volunteers with me to say thank you. Thank you. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so I want to thank um, Aaron Muir, Muir and Ethan Tim um who helped organize the event um we also had Haldane's um habitat revival club that came and helped which was great to see the kids helping out on the street um and then also um Liz Kelly um also brought her team of um, gardeners to help out as well so thanks to all of them and all the volunteers from the village and, and the community that, that came out for the day and helped. It, it made a big difference. Okay. Matt Krug is not able to join us tonight. So we'll just pull out a couple of quick highlights from his report. And all of these reports are available on the village website. If you'd like to get down into the nitty gritty, you're welcome to read through them there. Um, they're available for past meetings as well. Um, I wanted to pull out that We've had the annual inspection by the Department of Health for the wastewater plant um, and the water plant and the biannual inspection for pump stations. Um, they were all satisfactory. Um, and the Department of Health was particularly pleased to see long needed upgrades being implemented, um, particularly at wastewater, um, the grading in the wet well, the new grinder, and the new auger motor. Uh, and also, um, hydrants were pumped, were, were um, flushed successfully in the last week. So thank you for everyone's patience for that patience while we got through that and cleaned the streets afterward. Um, code enforcement, we're starting to see an uptake, which we expect um, in the spring. Um, the code enforcement officer is also working with the chairs of the HCRB and the zoning board related to signs that have been put up without permit. You do need a permit for signs on Main Street. Um, uh, and you may need HDRB review. So he is working with um, with that team to follow up on that. Um, and he's also assisting us with some modifications in the sign code, which we'll discuss in a bit. I think we have officer in charge, Larry Burke with us. <laughs> Yeah, if you can, um, Madam Mayor, if you could read the uh, report, that'd be great. If there's any questions, I'll be here to answer any questions on the report. Sure. So uh, the two, two um, important elements of Larry's report, I think, are the false alarms. We wanted folks to know that those were scattered around the village, and that's not a particular property that that is having false alarms necessarily, um, and they're mostly fire alarms. Um, and then he wanted to point out the uptick in parking tickets, 89 parking tickets in this period due to folks not moving their cars on streets, village streets. It's really important when we call for no parking on the streets that you move your cars so we can plow and make the roads passable quickly. Um, the fire company is here. Yeah. Before we move on to fire, just let people know, um, Altice has crews blocking off streets. They're doing rewiring. So if you see People, you see streets closed, you see workmen and flagmen on the roads. That's what that's, that's for. Great. Thanks. Uh, Chief Phillips is with us. Just want to make one point clear on your report. The forcible entry is related to a wellness check. You assisted the police department in um, checking on the welfare of a resident. Sure. What do you have uh, for us? 13 calls last month. Nothing crazy. Um, I want to thank. Legislator Montgomery for setting up Monday with Senator Schumer. Stopped by with all the Phillipstown fire chiefs to go over grant opportunities and stuff like that. So very exciting. Dignitary in the village. Hopefully that'll go somewhere. Did you feel hopeful? We'll see how it goes. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Mm. You know? um, and it's super dry out. We've done three brush fires in the last three days, so oh let's God. not do that. So what are your recommendations to help prevent brush fires? Not start a fire. <laughs> 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 no campfires. Be careful when you're cooking outdoors. Don't throw your cigarette. Don't throw your cigarette out the window. Thank you. I know you just came from a fire this evening, right? Yeah, last night up there on tiles and then a couple of the villages on Easter. So we're good. We don't really want any more. Well, thank you for being here tonight after being in the field. That's all I got. Thank you. And yes, thank you to Legislator, Mon Legislator Montgomery. Um, monthly report with Justice Court. Um, total income seven thousand two hundred and fifty six. Um, um, twenty four, twenty four charges, twenty four defendants. And we'll move on to the standing boards. Do we have anyone from HDRB? I don't think so. Have a good night. Um, lots of good activity and workshopping happening um, with the Historic District Review Board, assisting. Um, residents and business owners with problem solving on design. Um, I just want to pull out their, their board business. They, the board has prepared um, requested information for a certified local government audit from the State Historic Preservation Office. That's a um, periodic review that needs to happen. We are a certified local government. Um, and the HDRB discussed the proposed um, plan mixed use section of the zoning code, which we'll talk about in a bit. Um, and I'll just read out, we agree that the role of the HDRB is out, outlined sufficiently and appropriately. Any further comments or input from our board members on the draft will be made as private citizens. Do we have anyone from the planning board? Okay. Um, also, thanks to the planning board, we did provide um, interagency drafts to our standing boards of chapter 134, which again, we'll come back to later, but the planning board um, quickly turned around some very helpful initial feedback and we look forward to the full report that they will submit in keeping with the public process outlined for code changes. Um, and they also allowed us to finalize the sale of parcel behind the studio on 37 Fair. And they reviewed that. Uh, um, sketch plan approval. Okay, I know we are, do not have rec with us tonight. Um, it, oh, excuse me, zoning board. Zoning board has not met, but I will say that the mm -hmm. chair and one of the members has been deeply engaged um, in chapter 134, so they are not without work. Um, Recreation Commission, um, they're continuing their work on updates in the village code. We had, Haldane had its, um, opening game this week in the new field at Mayor's Park. Um, that went well, getting great reviews from the players and the families about um, the intermunicipal agreement we were able to achieve with Haldane to have that park used more and better. Yeah, nice. Say that again. The infield looks good. The infield does look good. Um, we do have one event application before us tonight from the Rec Commission. Um, it is a veterans group, uh, another summit, Guardian Revival. Um, they are working on a trail stewardship project and would like to use Mayor's Park as a home base from 9.30 to 2.30 for rest and snacks for their folks. If there are any questions about that application? It has already been reviewed. It has been reviewed. Everyone has um, signed off on it. Uh, the insurance certificates are in and the rec commission said that the fee should be waived unless you guys had a problem with that. Um, it is a nonprofit organization. Um, are there any objections to waiving the fee? No. Okay. Um, would someone like to make a motion regarding the event on April 22nd? And thank you to Lillian, who is our events coordinator. I'll make a motion to approve the event April 22nd, 2023 from another summit, Guardian Revival Inc. Um, from the hours of 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Uh, what is it, 9.30? Oh, yes, you're right, 9.30 to 2.30. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, and with that, we are also waiting to the fee. Thank you, Lillian. Okay, updates from our municipal partner. Hello, Deputy Supervisor, joining us from the town. Oh, good evening, everybody. Sorry, I missed last month, but we had a, a meeting ourselves last week. We had a basketball game. 
Ooh, you have. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Nobody here, I assure you. All right. Anyway, the uh, highway garage were about 95% completed. We finally got the right electrical panel. Electric, electrical work is 100% completed. They're still working on the punch list. But we did move out of the trailer into the new building about two weeks ago. So uh, we have a lot of happy uh, people up there. Uh, we're still working on getting that grant of $1.7 million. And it looks still pretty promising according to our supervisor. Uh, CCA came and gave a presentation on a new program. There's still work being going on in that, but I understand you, you guys just passed, passed a resolution and so do we will be before as well. So yeah, well, I think they're supposed to come and give another presentation to a public yeah. hearing as well. Coming up. Uh, we, we'll, we'll, be passing resolution, uh, we'll be passing a resolution uh, opposing the discharge of contaminated water in the Hudson River from the point. Approve the donation for the Fish and Fur Club Children's Fishing Day. I think it's May 6th or May 7th yeah. coming up. Garrison Landing, we've had a lot of issues down at Garrison Landing. Uh, we've been buying an awful lot of water over the last several months. But anyway, we locate, finally located a leak. And now we're down to only two tankers a day, which is pretty good. We were up to one with six a day. Oh, my God. So we took a long time to find the leak. We thought we, we found one leak, and then we, another one popped up. Was it under the train tracks? The one was. And then we found another one outside, right by the uh, equal theater. Yeah. Yikes. Well, we fixed it, and now we're in pretty good shape. And we're in the process of, uh, as I've been reported on, we drilled it all the well across the street. It's getting 20 gallons a minute. They're in the process of doing a 72-hour pump test, which probably will be completed today. They started it on Monday. Cleaning board is still very busy. We'll be appointing a new member uh, this tomorrow night. Food scrapping, so we have 180 people. We're still encouraging uh, people to sign up for the food scraps. It's a, it's a good program. We're probably going to look into adding a, a second day of drop-off to food scraps as well. That's in the process as well. So that's it. Okay. Thank you. Um, and thank you to you and your colleagues and to Adam Hoteling for providing staging space for the crews who are working on the aqueduct reconnection. Um, the highway, highway garage is in a central location to the three work sites. And so they are making space available for equipment storage. Thank you very much. You're uh, no report from the county legislat legislature this week, this month. Um, report from members of the Board of Trustees. Hold and go last. Um, I've been working on a couple projects, as Bugsy mentioned, um, on Main Street. One is getting pavers in at the sort of uh, tree dirt spot next to um, the Cold Spring Coffee House. Um, I've got uh, one. Um, contractor that sent a bid in. I'm still waiting to hear back from two others, so I've been in contact with three. Um, and we're hoping to get the pavers in and uh, move a bike rack there by the end of May. Um, and working with Bugsy on getting the tunnel cleaned up. Um, we have uh, an artist, local artist, who's going to present the board with three design options um, that will She's specifically a mural artist. She's a mural artist. She went to Haldane. She was born and raised here. Um, and she's working on kickstarting and sort of launching her career as a mural artist. She's done some murals in Beacon. She does commercial projects. Um, and she uh, showed promise and interest for this job. Um, and she said that she should have designs ready in about two weeks. Awesome. And you have been just really rocking the bids and budget. Thank you very much for all the work and thank you for the Main Street beautification. Sure. Anyone else with anything to report? Okay. I can mention a, yeah, a couple of things. Uh, so Matt Kirk and I met with um, someone from Lime Energy last week at the water and wastewater to get estimates to convert lighting to LEDs um, and we would use our clean energy um, grant funds for that. So we're waiting for the, the cost estimate. But again, the idea is Reduce the electricity usage there so that we've reduced the cost of the plants and um, uh, reduce those operating costs. Uh, so, um, hopefully, more on that soon. Um, I was at the Climate Smart um, Town, you know, so town um, committee yesterday um, where there was an update that, so we're still waiting for those EV chargers that uh, they're still um, in the process of getting the approval from Central Hudson for the, um, the installation costs, but we hope to have that. Finalized soon. It's a kind of slow bureaucratic process. Um, and then, uh, you know, there was interest. There's interest in the group on supporting the town and village on the 
um, uh, sort of enroll the process of getting the CCA out um, and would be and there's interest in helping develop the letter that goes out to the public and make sure that it's clear and um, provide the right information. So um, if that's all right, I'd be glad to work with some volunteers with uh, to make sure that it's mm -hmm. top language. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We've been looking at the language for a long time. So to have users look at it would be. Yeah. I think so. Great. Okay. So we can run with that. We have a little bit of a little bit of time. Excellent. And it's at the for the end of May that we have the next session with um from the date, mid May, late May. Mid to late May. Yeah. Okay. Um if no one has anything else, I will make my report. So on Monday, um Deputy Mayor Woods and I met with representatives from New York State Parks. The meeting was held at our request. Um, we, in, the meeting included former garrison resident Eric Kulisade, who's the Parks Commissioner, and also in attendance were Deputy, Deputy Commissioner Matt Davidson, Ron Rausch, who's the Deputy Commissioner for Environmental Standards, Taconic Regional Parks Director Linda Cooper, and Evan Thompson, who's the Highlands Preserve Park Manager. Um, and we were joined by Mayor Chris Winward as well. Um, to discuss issues related to the villages. Um, I just want to let you know what the deputy mayor and I advocated for um, and continue to advocate for. Um, we advocated strongly for Cold Springs thriving residential community and local economy and for its preservation along with our quality of life. We spoke extensively about long-term livability concerns with fear trail development. Um, we talked about the scoping document that's driving the development of the draft environmental impact statement and our concerns that the study topics uh, by the nonprofit developer fully take into account the visitor loads that have grown enormously since the scope was established in 2017. So making sure that we're getting a good picture of on the ground conditions now. Um, we made the case for help from the state level as visitation currently stands, um, as well as in light of the trails development. We acknowledge that the village cannot solve these problems on our own, and there is potential for the Fjord Trail to bring real visitor management solutions if it's planned well um, and with the full participation of residents, our planning board, and the village board. We discussed the underlying infrastructure and systems issues that must be addressed before the trail is developed on whatever route is considered through the village. And we emphasize particularly the need for a full and thorough traffic study and visitation study for the village. Um, we asked for clarity for the public regarding the legal and financial relationship between parks and the Fjord Trail and noted that despite several written requests from me um, and verbal request, I only received documents after a resident um, foiled them. Um, so we did also advocate that these would, we'll make these available on our website as well so the public can have them, but we did advocate for them to be translated into a, a more accessible format for um, everyone to understand the relationship between the two. Um, we raised concerns about the state's superior sovereignty in the development that so fundamentally affects the future of our village and our quality of life here. And we also um, talked about balancing donor desires with community needs and desires. So I think we're both really glad that we had the opportunity to raise these issues directly with the commissioner. Um, it's not the last conversation that the board or the community will have with Commissioner Kulisade or with Parks. Um, and with that in mind, I would ask folks to please submit questions and participate in the May 8th session at Helding. That's it for me. Okay, so we'll move on to board business. Um, the first is introduction and discussion on chapter 134. Actually, we're introducing it tonight and discussion will have been uh, begin more fully next week. We want folks to have a chance to read what is available. It's a big thick document, it's a tome. Um, so I wanna introduce a bit. So tonight we're acknowledging the receipt of a draft of the zoning chapter chapter 134, as well as a red line reflecting modifications from the existing village code. And these are available on our website. And it's the continuation of a public process that began in earnest on January 25th, when the village's consulting planner, Jeff, can you change the camera? Oh, <laughs> to not end. Um, 
And it began in earnest on January 25th when the village's consulting planner, Ted Fink, presented the goals and objectives of current work conducted by the ad hoc working group on the zoning update. That meeting is available for review on the village's YouTube channel and minutes and supporting materials are on the village website. So the ad hoc committee stands on the shoulders of many volunteers who developed the village's comprehensive plan and local waterfront revitalization strategy, as well as those who sat on previous iterations of the code update committee and a variety of trustees under several different configurations of the village board. And I am really pleased that this administration is able to accept a full draft from the current working group and present it to the public. Um, I would like to recognize the countless hours given to research and writing by the tremendous team that made up the ad hoc working committee. Um, Donald McDonald, the chair emeritus of the Zoning Board of Appeals, Eric Wirth, the current chair of the Zoning Board, Jesse St. Charles, who is a current member, he's with us tonight. Hi, Jesse. Paul Henderson, who's a member emeritus of an earlier code update committee and was part of the development of the comp plan as well. And lastly, uh, Trustee Bozy, who too is a former member of the ZBA. So tonight I'm making a motion to introduce an amended chapter 134, the zoning chapter for the village of Cold Spring. May I have a second? A second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. So to date, in interagency communications, the draft has been provided to the standing boards for initial feedback. That's the ZBA, the planning board, and the historic district review board. Their continued comments will be welcomed by us, the trustees, and become part of the public record. The village attorney has done an initial review of the draft and provided feedback, which has been incorporated. And the county planning department has provided initial feedback on new sections. But tonight's acknowledgement, the, re the receipt of the draft, um, sets in motion a calendar of next steps for public participation and legal requirements for land use code changes. So first the clerk, provides an official draft to the Putnam County Planning Department and requests formal feedback within 30 days. This meets the requirements of General Municipal Law Section 239M. The clerk will also provide an official draft in red line to the village's planning board and request formal feedback within 30 days. This meets the requirements of our local code, Section 134-32. Um, and in accepting it tonight, um, uh, we have a resolution to set the public hearing um, for 134, as well as updates to two other chapters that require cross-reference um, to the zoning board. And we are finalizing those and they will be available. They're chapter 76 noise and chapter 104 signage. Drafts and red lines of those will be some of <laughs> provided to the public once they are finalized and we're sure all the cross-references are right. And they'll be um, provided for public, re public review within the window that's required under law. Um, the village board will discuss the draft in public, so now you all, those of you, uh, Laura and I read plenty, now it's time for you to read. We'll begin a conversation of next week in public. We'll also welcome public comments then, so if there are things that we need to um, adjust, um, we're prepared going into the public hearing. Um, so that's where we are on that. Um, so I would make a motion um, to adopt resolution 11-2023 setting a date and time for public hearing on proposed local laws amending chapters 76, 104, and 134 of the Village Code. Um, whereas the Board of Trustees of the Village of Cold Springs seeks to update the Village Code by amending chapters 76, noise, 104, signs and placards, and 134, zoning, and set a time and place for a public hearing to consider such amendments. Now, therefore, it is hereby resolved that the Village Board determines that it will be the lead agency with respect to the review of the proposed local law, the project, in accord with New York State Environmental Quality Review Act, CICRA, and part 617 of the regulations implementing CICRA, since there are no other agencies that have the authority to approve the project. And let it be further resolved that a public hearing be held by the village board in order to receive comments and suggestions, suggestions regarding the proposed amendment to the above listed chapters to receive any comments concerning the potential adverse environmental impacts of the proposed legislation in accord with CICRA. On Wednesday, April 26, 2023, at 7 p.m. at Village Hall, 85 Main Street, Cold Spring, New York, and it's further resolved that the village clerk is hereby authorized 
to cause and directed to cause said public notice of said hearing to be given as provided by law. And it's a roll call vote. Trustee Bozen? Aye. Trustee Fatty? Aye. Trustee Starbuck? Aye. Trustee Woods? Aye. And Mayor Foley? I vote aye. Officially adopted on this date by a vote of 5 0. Okay. Thank you very much, Jeff. Is there anything that you wanted to add to that? I have just another big thank you to the committee. I mean, I think there have been some folks that have had maybe five meetings a week. I mean, it's just a massive amount of effort to get as far as we got on the timeline that we needed to keep um, uh, uh, to keep up with the nicer the deadline. So, um, just a massive thank you. Um, I would love for someone else to talk a while. Would someone else like to make a resolution accepting the bid for a new police vehicle? Jeff, you want to describe the, the process where you posted? We have to. Um, we did a mini bid through the New York State system. We got back to two bids on it. So we're accepting the lowest bid on this. Mm. So the resolution is for the price of the vehicle and some of the aftermarket does not include computer and the hardware that's needed for that. And that's a separate quote that we'll be addressing right after this. I'll make a motion to accept resolution 12, 2023, authorizing the purchase of a police vehicle. Second. Whereas the village of Cold Spring needs to purchase a new police vehicle, and whereas the village solicited bids through the New York State Vehicle Marketplace in mini bid system, and whereas the village received a total of two bids, and therefore it is hereby resolved that the village awards the bid for the purchase of the 2023 Chevrolet Tahoe to Chevrolet of Smithstown at a cost not to exceed $68,500 plus any incidental fees, delivery, title, registration, et cetera, and costs related to the purchase and installation of computer equipment. It is hereby further resolved that the village will pay this amount in full through the fiscal year of 2022-23's general fund budget. It's a roll call vote. Trustee Bozzi? Aye. Trustee Patty? Aye. Trustee Starbuck? Aye. Trustee Woods? Aye. And Mayor Foley? Aye. Officially adopted on this date by a vote of 5-0. Just as a reminder, that vehicle will replace a, a dated and aging 2014 um, vehicle that is high. There's concern that our, we have another high vehicle um, that will be able to access Lower Main Street in flooding conditions, which are happening more and more. Well, and also it's good to know that um, because we're updating all the computer systems and all the vehicles, right. it made more sense to do this now so that we spend the money once to update for the new vehicle rather than do it in the old vehicle as a new one. Okay. Um, so the next is not a resolution, Jeff, correct? It's just a motion and vote? Correct. Okay, so this follows on what Eliza was just saying. Um, this is uh, a, um, pricing from managed technologies. This is our standing technology consultant on the amount of $10,641.26 to take the um, take one of the laptops out of the police vehicle, um, repurpose it for another department, I think it's going to water and wastewater, Correct. Um, and install the new laptop in the new truck, in the new vehicle when the new vehicle arrives. Any discussion? Just, recycling. Mm -hmm. It's not just the laptop, yeah. it's the docking yeah. station, the it's the hardware, it's making sure that it's also ready for the CAD system. It's the whole nine yeah. yards. And, and that's important. Michelle um, did do her research um, and engage with um, the IT department at the county to make sure that what we're buying is checked to accept the new CAD system when it comes. So um, I would make a motion to accept this quote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, is Jane still here? We're going to talk about the bathrooms. <laughs> They're ready. They're ready to be open. Um, and we have um, budget available for the roadways and facilities crew to ma maintain them during the week um, and um, a paid crew to do that, do so on the weekends. Um, I think it's fair to say that visitor ship 
is already increasing. We're seeing folks more during the week. Um, and I think that part of it is, hmm? There's thousands looking for thousands it. is a bit of, a, a bit of an exaggeration, but I think part of it is uh, understanding that um, I think people are starting to realize that cold spring's crazy on the weekends. We're coming during the week. It's busy today. It's busy today. Oh, it's I mean, it's beautiful today. All you need is temperature over 61 to 60 degrees. So, um, oh, yes, thank you. Um, so we have the we have the money available. The question before us is, and they're ready to go. Bugs is definitely ready to go. The question is, what days do we want to open them for? Um, and starting when? I would recommend that we do now. Yeah. Yeah. Possible. Yeah, as soon as possible. Um, in the past, we've always opened them weekends and holidays up until May thirty first or Memorial Day weekend. Um, so. I would recommend you stick to that schedule unless anyone else feels like adding more days is important, but I think the merchants can cover the weekdays still from my merchant's point of view. Okay, <clears throat> um, I mean, it seems like weekdays are yeah busy. Is it, could we consider Thursday to Sunday, something like that? I mean, it's our own crew, so it's not a, um, so as long as it fits, if they can fit it within their regular work hours, it's, it, you know, it doesn't add to that line of the um, outside cleaning. Kathleen? Yeah. So I'm not first. We'll just have it coming at the end, okay? Right. Can we go to May 1st? Yeah, it's Sunday. It's warm. And... What do you mean go to May Start the open, open on May 1st. When do we do that? Yeah. Well, we're all, I mean, we're almost there now. I'd advocate, yeah. I'd advocate for opening, given, given the yes, numbers right. of people we're seeing, I'd advocate for opening them now. Yeah, and spring the spring of the coming up. And cool yeah. Out, right? yeah. Uh, well, yeah, with this 22nd earthquake, maybe that's a good day to reopen them. Perfect day. So how many days of the week are we talking about? I mean, at this point, there's not a lot of traffic, not a ton of traffic during the week, especially not on Mondays and Tuesdays, because most businesses are closed. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe Wednesday through Wednesday through Sunday. That sounds great. Starting in April twenty second. Okay, and then starting weekends this weekend. I'm fine with that. I'm fine with it. Yeah, if we can have a cleaner set up to come. Yes. Yeah. So anyway, and I have to just check with him and make sure he can come this sure weekend. But I think yeah. he probably will be able to. Jeff, do you need a vote on that? It would probably be good to have one. Okay. So mm -hmm. let's lay it out again. We are. We have a, a motion to. Open the bathrooms on the weekends beginning now, pending the availability of the cleaner. Mm -hmm. And then to shift to open Wednesday through Sunday, starting April 22nd, mm -hmm. and then open every day after Memorial Day. Second. Oh, okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Oh, I don't want to talk about those. Yeah. Let's yeah. just. <laughs> okay. Um, so approval of minutes to eight. I had no modifications. Anyone else have any? I I did, and as usual, I'm so sorry, Jeff. I sent them at the very end. Um, I'm gonna give here. One is that I, I felt like the description of the streets um, under the the mayor's update um, on the residential parking program. It made it. I read it as it sounding like we were proposing all of those streets as new, but. Um, it's a combination of existing um, oh, right. I see. and the proposed. So it could just be changed to sure. the, you know, that you can include yeah. the if new, new and existing district, something like that. And then the other was that I, it looks like there's an error on the board visit business. 419 is the public hearing for chapters 76. Well, that was, eight, that eight, was the schedule at the time. But I mean, but you don't have the, Hearing and the adoption on this. Do you have it on the same day? No. Well, so, we can if you if the board decides that sure. you know, they've got the response. But they oh, okay. All right. I thought that there had to be a window no. between the hearing and the. There can be if we choose to have a window. Okay. Well, then if that's how it was written initially, then that's fine. Okay. Any objections to Laura's proposed modifications? Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. Um, someone like to approve the minutes of the year 2023. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 
Bills. You got them. Motion to approve. Batch 1672, amount of $77,081.41. Second. Uh, all in favor? Okay. Okay. Um, well, Jeff reminds me that during the public comment period, we have a letter to leave into the record regarding the budget. So I would like to reopen. I would like to make a motion to reopen the public hearing to read that letter. Oh, it's still open. I don't need to. Um, so I'd like to read that into the record. I just put my fingers on it. Just one second. If not, can someone pull it up on their screen and I'll read it from there? Oh, is it Jeff? Uh, is that, um, Grand mm -hmm. Here it is. I got it. I got it. Thank you. <laughs> Note -taking. Yes. Um, I respectfully request that before deciding on any village tax increase, the board seriously consider the current state of our economy and the effect inflation is having on the residents of the village. According to the last proposed budget, the trustees are contemplating a 2.4% increase or possibly higher. While this may not seem a large number per household, consider that the trustees have just increased sewer flat rate and water rate fee, water usage rate fee, so that each household now must pay an additional $40 per year for sewer an additional 76, um, per th 76 cents per thousand gallons of water used. For a household that uses 20,000 gallons of water per quarter, the total yearly increase will be over $100. In addition, to the Haldane, in addition, the Haldane school budget is due to increase. This is a large hit for visit village residents, some, may, some who have no children in school. In order to more closely balance the village budget with no or minimal tax increase, I urge the board to rework the estimated income shown. In many instances, instead of being conservative, and that's in quotes, please use more realistic numbers. Former trustee Marie Early pointed out a number of line items that are understated. Adjusting these items to realistic numbers will add to income and allow for downward adjustments to taxes. Thank you, Francis Murphy 5 High Street. That's already done. Um, folks will see that the budget that's before the public tonight um, is down to a flat 2% increase. Um, when we review budgets earlier, they're tentative and we make changes and adjustments. And we did thank you, Maurice, for some of your suggestions. But I will say that we are, because these income, the revenue sources are new and we're launching new programs with parking meters and occupancy tax, we don't know exactly what's coming. And I would rather that we be conservative and not be short. Um, but we did, we have managed um, with Michelle's diligent work to hold the tax rate um, increase at 2%, which is well within the New York state tax cap. It's 42% of the amount that was uh, that we were allowed to levy. Um, and we, we only took 42% of the full amount that we were allowed to levy. So thank you for your comment, Fran. Um, any other public comment? We just have one side, Main Street. I'm hoping that in addition to parking and everything, somebody will watch over U-turns and speeding. I was in New York today and I saw there's a sign, you know, it's only 25 miles an hour in New York City mm -hmm. and it's photo, people get tickets from photos, whatever it says, I took a picture, but I don't. They have camera enforcement in the city. Camera enforcement. Mm -hmm. We don't have that capacity, unfortunately. I understand that, but we have three cameras somewhere. Why not use it? There are there are there are LPRs at the village boundaries. Uh -huh. There are none on Main Street. They belong to the sheriff's department. But but I just want to say it is so dangerous. It's amazing that people haven't been killed. I just have to say that. Do you see it every day? I know you're in here. No, no, I see it too. We you we will, we're all working on Main Street too. We see it as well. U-turns are a big the problem. The U-turns are so silly. The speeding is ridiculous. How can a person speed for one block to where? I just have to say that. I just, it, it's just really scary. Thank you, Jane. And the officer in charge, he's not still with us, but um, the officer in charge was on the call this evening. That is, enforcement is something we're very much aware of. Um, and our officers are <laughs> pulling people over when they see U turns and are, and are making um, speeding stops. Oh, I see. And there are policemen walking in the street, which is very nice. I think. Thank you, Jane. Yeah. But uh, I just hope nobody gets killed. 
Well, I certainly hope so too. I think we all hope that. <laughs> um, I think you'll see that when we move into resident parking, um, implementing that program, there, there are, Jane, there are elements that we are also incorporating to make it safer for pedestrians, including expanding the sight lines around crosswalks, um, additional signage around crosswalks. So there are some elements of that as well. It's, we're not just thinking about parking. We're also very much prioritizing pedestrian movement in the village with that plan. Any other public comment? Ms. Early? When will the, um, so there's been a public hearing set for 134, 104, and 76. When will we see 76 and 104? Probably by the end of the week. We're just double checking the references, but they'll, it will certainly be within the period required. And what is the for public hearing? Required? Five days. Five days. But we're going to have it ready for you far long, long before then. Worry not. Five days from. Jeff, would you like to address the question? Let's start. It's, it's, I have to go through the rules. I don't want to misstate something. We have to, <coughs> the public notice has to be made five days before the public hearing, okay. which we will do. The availability, and just for everybody's aware, the references and the change to Murphy chapters are minor. It, it's very minor, but they refer to C zoning chapter 134. So just making sure we have the right. Basically, we're taking the drafts that you prepared as trustee and making sure that the cross references are current with the numbers and lettering in the current 134. Yes. Uh, when the um, when the code update work was completed and had public hearings, which was in October of 2021, there were two remaining issues. One was the identification of Mayor's Park and uh, the wastewater treatment and the highway garage as what zone should they be in. And a simple solution to that would have been, and that was pointed out in the meetings, would be to subdivide the property and identify one. So I can, you can stop because I can answer that question for you very easily. I, I was actually the person who pointed out the loss of protection for Mayor's Park um, because it was not divided appropriately between <laughs> two different zones. We had Beatty and Watson had, was hired to identify a lot line on which will be the dividing line for, as you'll see in the draft, a proper parks and recreation um, designation. It was mixed use under the October 20, 2021 proposal. And then you'll see a new designation for the water and wastewater, or excuse me, for the wastewater treatment plant and the highway as civic. So it that is, that's already taken care of and it's in the draft. Okay. Um, the second open issue mm -hmm. was the zoning for Marathon. Yes. And that's in the draft as well. The question is, so the solution for the first was very straightforward. The so solution for the second was a new definition of a planned unit development or mixed use or whatnot. And that is in the draft. Section 12. Pardon me? Section 12. It, it's in the draft. Section 12. You're right. So the question is, why were other sections of the code, which have been with us for a number of years and have served us very well, why have those definitions been changed fairly dramatically? I don't understand the logic behind that. I'm happy to explain, I'm happy to explain that logic to you. So we actually worked <laughs> with a consulting planner and with the village attorney as we were developing the code. There were a number of both definitions and procedures that were deficient under New York State law and needed to be brought into compliance with, with that New York State law. So that's the largest portion. The other element is that, as you know, from the January 25th um, public meeting, we are following recommendations in the comprehensive plan to introduce form-based zoning and to recognize it's a hybrid. And once you read it, we can have a conversation about it and to um, re-examine the residential districts so that they are more reflective of the village as it's built in reality. The code we have, as you well know, dates back to 1967, the 2021, which I think your dad was mayor then, 
and um, which is thanks. Thank you to, to all of the earlies for the work bringing us where we are um, with the zoning code today. The challenge with that code is that um, it is not reflective of the reality on the ground and it is very suburban in nature. So most village properties are non-compliant. So you will see when you review the residential codes that there are now sub sub districts of the residential code that recognize older developments and newer developments and have dimensions on the dimensional table that are more reflective of the reality on the ground, thereby meeting one of the comprehensive goal, com comprehensive plan goals, which you were also part of constructing, um, to uh, reduce the variances that residents need to seek for built realities on the ground. So I, I did an analysis of the zoning board of appeals reviews. So okay. we'll give that one more minute, Marie. Okay. <laughs> A third question, and it's eight, and there are other people who have their hands raised. I I will yield my time, and I'll come back. Okay. We'll we'll decide if we come back, Mr. Reisman. <laughs> Hello, good evening. I uh, oh, hope you can hear me. We sure can. Okay, I just want to look at my watch and make sure I stay within the three minutes. So, Michael, Michael, could you state your name and address for the record, please? Yes, Michael Reisman, 30 Rock Street. Um, I have to say that I am very disappointed that village bodies have conducted this zoning amendment process over the last few months with minimal transparency and now want to allow less than two weeks for the public to understand and comment on what may be the most significant change to village zoning law in 60 years since it was adopted. Two things, number one, this ad hoc committee. There is no information about that committee on the village website, who is on it, what it does, when it meets. This is a stark departure from village precedent regarding zoning changes. Uh, there was a code update committee that I was on. Uh, we held public meetings, we had minutes, we had reports, we had a process that was public. Uh, also, there was a short-term rental committee. Uh, they had the same. I do not understand why the ad hoc committee did not have a transparent process. Number two, open meetings law requires any proposed regulation that is to be uh, discussed at the meeting of a public body must be made available to the public 24 hours before the meeting and put on a website if the agency like the Village of Cold Spring has it. I found out that this was on the agenda tonight over the weekend. I wrote a letter on Sunday, which I believe the, the trustees and mayor have. On Tuesday, I got an acknowledgement of that letter. Uh, late on Tuesday, these material, I got a, an email that these materials were on the Village website. Uh, <laughs> about 26 hours ago. Um, it's 130 plus pages of materials. And by the way, it is not a red line against the existing code. It is a red line against some prior uh, draft document. I, I think that it, that is a serious error that needs to be corrected as soon as possible because th there, there are so many changes in this draft. Uh, it, it, it's, I mean, I cannot comment on the actual substance of it except to say it is a massive, massive change. Now, I implore the village board to reconsider forcing village residents and interested parties to review a 130 page document in less than two weeks and provide comment in this truncated public comment period. It just seems that the village board wants to rush this process to completion. I don't know why. I think that's bad policy. Um, I think that the uh, the issues regarding lack of compliance with the open meetings law have caused me concern. I think when people learn about them, they'll cause concern to other people. And I just, bottom line, two weeks is not enough. Thank you. Thank you. So let's start by addressing some of your questions. Jeff, when was the document posted on the Village website? Uh, yesterday, I believe right about five o'clock. Which is give or take a few minutes, six hours yeah. before the meeting. And, and address and, something, yeah, go ahead. Michael. Um, yes, you did send an email Sunday night. In all fairness, expecting a response on a Sunday night on Easter Sunday, I don't think was realistic. 
I was out on Monday, first thing Monday, Tuesday morning, I did acknowledge receipt of your email. So there was no monkey business going on here. There was, there was nothing untowards going on. It was, you got a response as soon as I could get a response to you. It was provided to me on Tuesday. I responded within 10 minutes of receiving it. So that's pretty great service. Um, so let's let's be clear that the public process related to the code has carried on for nine years. The, the addressing of the village code is not a new topic. Um, what is different is the need to meet a deadline from the outside funding source that was secured by the last board to do the work. We got an extension to June. That ad hoc committee has been meeting diligently since last summer and heavily since January to get the draft done. It's not a small task. Those members of the public have been <laughs> engaged in this process. Laura's right, three to five meetings a week. An ad hoc advisory committee um, is an unelected advisory entity, and it's meant to efficiently research and report back to elected officials who use the information to aid their public discussion of an issue. According to open meetings law, ad hoc committees of citizen members with purely advisory purpose aren't required to post agendas or minutes, but minutes have been taken and they are available for review from the public clerk. They're all there. The public have the opportunity to comment and question us as representatives and influence the discussion in public meetings and hearings. Ad hoc committees in cases like, the, like this are kind of like the village board having a research advisor. In weighing the issues before voting, the board considers the findings of the advisory board, yes, and the recommendations of the advisory board, but we also take into account public comment. So this timeline is no different than the timeline that was put forward in October of 2021 for the last iteration of the board. Yes, there are changes. I think as you make your way through, you will understand the logic as an attorney, particularly understanding the need to come into compliance with state requirements. Um, and I'm going to ask if Laura or Jesse, as a member of the ad hoc committee, would like to make any further comment related to the work of the ad hoc committee. No? Okay. So thank you for your question, and we look forward to your participation in the public hearing. And just stating for the record, we have complied with all requirements for open meetings for an ad hoc advisory committee. <clears throat> <clears throat> Last question. Yes, uh, there was a meeting of the planning board in March, and one of the uh, uh, one of the uh, items on the agenda was a discussion of uh, PMU. Mm -hmm. I asked for a copy, and I was told I I was not. Uh, what, what was the reason you were given for that, Marie? Uh, it was it was stated to be non foilable, and I couldn't have it. And who who was it that you had that information from? <laughs> Uh, Jack and the board secretary. And who was it that the board secretary called to confirm? I'm sorry. The village attorney. You asked the question. Yes. The clerk confirmed with the village board. And this was laid out in the delivery document, the memo, the covering memo that went with the draft yes. to the planning board that it is an interagency communication as a draft and therefore not discoverable under FOIL. You know this very well from the 30 chapters that you drafted in your time. So as trustee. I didn't foil it, Kathleen. This was an agenda item on the planning board. I asked for- but It's a not shareable. It's not a public document yet. You know that. You know that, Marie. But you just said that everything was open and available. A draft is was not available. And you know that that's how that works. Now it is available. I guess I'm a little confused. I see that you are. When it became available. It became available yesterday for the first time. That's right. Yes. Within the within the amount of time required under open meetings law, because Marie, yes. honestly, yes. we were working the the attorney, not the attorney, the planner was working up to the very end. Yeah, we have deadlines to meet. And and my initial request to the village clerk last year, last week, 
for a copy. I was told it would be available, would be made available to me at the introduction of the of, of chapter 134 tonight. That's where it's it's available on the village website and there are paper copies where Jeff? I was told oh, that we give a copy this morning. A copy this morning. Well, I was told <laughs> last week that it's earliest availability would be at the meeting tonight. So it seems to me it's been a closed process. Well it hasn't. It hasn't. It was available on the website last night. I'm sorry you didn't take the time to check. I did. Good. Okay. So you had it last night. So what's the problem? I was told originally it would be tonight. It was it was made available within the legal requirements of 24. All yeah, documents. But originally it was stated, no. You know better, Marie, stop. You know better. No, Kathleen. I, I, you actually I, do. You know very well how public well. process works. I'm going to close the public comment period now because I think we're done. I think we got your point. Any other comments from the board? Okay. Motion to any other questions? Motion, Motion to adjourn. adjourn. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> Hmm. I'm going to